labeled the world's fittest man. He organized and led the Ultimate Suck, a 36-hour race for WIU students, alumni, and friends at his family's farm in Cuba, Illinois. He runs San Diego's number one boot camp out of his business Gut Check Fitness in California. And he got his start right here at Western Illinois University. I'm talking about WIU alumnus Joe Decker, a 1998 kinesiology graduate. Since his graduation, he has helped thousands of women, men, kids, and seniors get into shape and lose weight. Once overweight and out of shape himself, Joe transformed his body and his life through an amazing journey from fat to fittest. And today, he wants to do the same by helping others, pushing them beyond their limits in order to achieve their fitness goals. When it comes to fitness, he states, don't think, just do it, become robotic. And that's why we ask him to take a seat in the purple chair. Here's Joe Decker. Well, I graduated from Cuba, Illinois. Uh, I got, went into the military. My parents were lower income people. They, my mom was a janitor. My dad was a, uh, was a welder at Caterpillar. Uh, I didn't have enough money to send us boys. There's four of us to school. So again, went to, went to the military and got out and uh, decided to go someplace close to home. And I actually uh, was, was in the, the honors pre-law program. I was going to be a lawyer and was studying for my law school admissions test. I woke up one day and said, what the heck are you doing? I don't want to be a lawyer. And I dropped out and just kind of traveled around the United States for five years. I ended up in New Orleans bartending on uh, Bourbon Street and got a real bad uh, alcohol and drug problem. And I knew I had to do something to get away from it. So I moved from uh, New Orleans back to WIU to go back to school. And the drugs and alcohol followed me. And uh, I needed something to replace that addiction. So I decided to go into fitness. And that's how I got into fitness was because of some bad stuff, but um, so I got into uh, marathon running when I was here actually and, and got a jog around the entire campus um, and just, you know, such a beautiful campus in the fall. And I think that's probably, probably one of my favorite things about WIU is WIU in the fall, I think is one of the most beautiful schools around. You know, I, I really enjoyed pretty much everything about the WIU experience, um, especially the quality of education. I know when I got out and moved to DC and uh, started working with people in the same industry as me, I was around the big, the big state school people like the U of I's and uh, you know, even some from kind of like Ivy League schools. And I noticed that my education was every bit as, as good as their education, if not better. You know, I don't know if it's because I got out and I went to school when I was a little more mature or just because the classes were really great. I think it's because the school itself was really great. WIU has been very instrumental in my life. I mean, extremely instrumental. You know, I go through the things that, that have really made a difference and you know, college education and you know, I mean, the education was incredible, but I think just so many different parts of the entire college experience and just the, the life maturation for me, you know, and getting older and, and uh, WIU, I, just, I really, it's been, it's been integral, it's been important. And, um, you know, I do the same thing with the military and do it with other important parts. And I think for anyone out there, you know, I can't imagine the experience hasn't been important to them. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's nice to come back. It's nice to be involved. and. It's also nice now that I can give back too, you know, because I know there's young guys and gals out there like me that, you know, are wondering, okay, I go to college, now what, the heck, what do I do with my life? And, you know, I've been fortunate enough that I've been all figured out, and it's been all nice to help others out. So I think for anybody out there, you know, you come back and get to see old friends and, you know, uh, instructors and stuff like that, but also help out hopefully the, you know, adults of tomorrow. There is a Guinness World Record for fitness. I was about 28 years old and a buddy and I were sitting around and we were uh, in a bar, of course, drinking a few beers and we watched it on Guinness Prime Time. And, and uh, the two of us were like, oh, you know, we could beat that guy, no problem. Uh, so I went home and put it on my note board next to my desk. And of course, you know, when I woke up and sobered up, I realized I couldn't beat this guy. But it just kind of stuck there with me for a couple of years. And when I turned 30, it was one of those big turning points, at least in my life, and I think maybe a lot of people's lives. You know, it's like, oh my God, I'm no longer a kid. I'm now have to become an adult. Uh, it was a new millennium and all kinds of stuff. So I decided to try to break that Guinness World Record. And I tried to do a lot of things that year that nobody in the world had ever done. And for me, it was just kind of to see whether I could do it or not, you know, to see who and what I was, what I was made of. And in, in December of 2000, I broke the 24-hour physical fitness challenge and got titled the world's fittest man. 
Yeah, I'm as much an intellectual as I am a fitness guy. You know, people always think, oh, you're that dumb jock, but I mean, I, I still read and take classes and all kinds of stuff like that. I really I believe that, you know, I'm not big into hoodoo, voodoo type stuff, but I think the mind, the body, uh, I mean, the soul kind of all go together. And I think in order for you to be really 100% complete if you want to use it for lack of better terms or just to be on top of your game you you know your body and your mind they have to be everything goes together because you know I ask people a lot of times I mean you think about the lowest points in your life it's generally when you've been in the, you've been in the worst shape of your life I mean they kind of go hand in hand so at least for me and I think it applies to everybody else the more physically fit the more emotionally and psychologically fit you are too just it's all really it's, it's all intertwined I think it's just impor important for all of us you know, I, I think one of the things, you know, that I, I, what, and definitely I know something that worked for me to get the ball rolling uh, was just to really look in the mirror and just do an honest, like, personal evaluation. You know, it's a self-analysis, a self-awareness, like, you know, look at yourself right now. I mean, don't know, all BS aside, no one else is looking, you know, where am I in my life? What do I want to do with my life? What do I want to be when I grow up? What, uh, you know, what is this, what is that? And then you have to write it down, you know, make a list, make a plan and then go from there. I mean, it starts with baby steps. You know, I mean, I, you know, I can now run 150 mile races, but when I started, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I remember running my first mile and it took me, it took me forever, you know, and it was painful, but it's just, it's just getting started and continuing, you know, to stick with it and not giving up, you know, continuing to, to, uh, to drive on and to make it happen. Um, I own a company out in San Diego called Gut Check Fitness, and we work with thousands of people, uh, men, women, kids, seniors from all around the area, and actually from around the world. And I think, you know, one thing that we try to get across to people, and one thing that we do as a company, is to bring people in and um, get them into a group. Like, if we could find someone to work out with, or something like camaraderie, or some kind of community-based type thing. Because on your own, I mean, there's a lot of great programs out there like P90X, different programs where you go and do it alone but then afterwards you're kind of like all right I'm alone no one really gives a crap right now if I you know head and go get a you know a Sunday instead of finish up these last 15 push-ups but if you find a community-based group I, I think this that's one thing I tell people you know come in you know get involved and like with us I know everybody's name email address you know well, anniversaries and birthdays so we constantly stick with them or constantly reminding them you know so they know that they're part of something bigger than themselves so go out and find a group, you know, like whether it be, you know, a Zumba class or a boot camp or a running club or anything, you know, something where there's other like-minded people. We do work primarily with intermediate to advanced level. There's, there's tons of companies out there that work with, uh, with beginners and uh, our niche market isn't. You know, our niche market is more the person that's been the ex-high school athlete, maybe college athlete, or is it someone who's been active at one time? Um, just because we, you know, we, that's, that's, that's who we work with. So you, you do have to have a, a definitely a degree of fitness. Uh, you don't have to be extremely fit, but yeah, yeah. You just gotta have, you know, the drive. I mean, but we'll take anybody in as long as they come in and I'm like, all right, are you serious right now? Because if you BS me, I don't like BS. And if they come in and I mean, we got like, we have some guys and gals that are a couple hundred pounds overweight. And I mean, they go through, through, through a hard time with us, but they have heart and they have the drive and the passion, so. That's the main thing. It's not so much the fitness as what you got inside. I think we all need a little bit of tough love. I think that, um, I think personally that uh, by being tougher on people like that, I think they'll appreciate it more. You know, I look at movie stars and people like, you know, Michael Jackson and actors like Heath Ledger, The Pass Away. And I think if only they had somebody in their life that would have said, you're not cool doing drugs or you're not cool doing this or doing that. They might still be alive, but they surround themselves a lot of times by people that, that don't like, speak the truth or not honest with them or not hard on them and I'm not we are not hard like I call it holding your hand and kicking your butt at the same time but I mean so many times you know going back to the question about people how they stay motivated well so many times they're they're kind of they'll try to like get by on you like you know I'm gonna do this and I'm like no you're not I can see it in your face it's like no you're not so you know I'm like listen if you don't then I'm gonna be there and it's I'm not mean to them and when you say hard like I'm I'm just on them. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm consistently there. You know, I'm, uh, you know, like I'm a friend. I'm, when I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound. So, it's just, you know. So yeah, I guess you might think it's a little bit hard, but uh, you know, I want to motivate. I want to keep them around for a while because I, I do believe in people, you know, and I believe in helping others out and, and not being a fair weather friend. I will almost guarantee any human being out there today that's sitting around. I, I will, I will call you out on that one time because 
if you look around the amount of people that have time to update Facebook status, I mean, you have so umpteen minutes a day. I mean, you got so much time at night to watch TV and stuff like that. And I understand it's, it's not something you want to do. And I, I get it, but it's just, yeah, you have to. I mean, the thing is you, you really, you have to. I mean, I'm 42 years old right now, you know, just me personally. And I feel I'm as strong and as fast as I was when I was 18 years old. And I mean, you know, it's just, we can stay, we don't, I mean, granted we're gonna get older and we're gonna have aches and pains and our hair is gonna fall out and our mind's gonna go. But you know, at least we don't have to die slow, pathetic and terrible deaths. And my thing is just, it doesn't take a lot of time, guys. I mean, you know, we don't have kids or anything. Um, I mean, outside of all the people we work with, which are kind of our children a little bit. But you know, I get up at, we get up at 4.45 in the morning and I, you know, I don't wanna get up at 4.45. And I'm talking, you know, for anybody, you can get up 15 or 20 minutes earlier. And I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard for everybody out there because some people are legitimately busy. But, you know, I mean, you take a lunch break and the thing is you could, you know, park your car. I mean, you can walk to get your, you know, your Subway sandwich or salad. You can, you know, in the morning park a distance away. I mean, there's, there's really, I, I, you know, I'll tell people this. I, I guarantee if there's a new ring or a new, a new handbag that, that a woman wants or a new piece of uh, you know hunting equipment that a guy wants he will work his tail off he will go just go out of his way and put the time and effort in to get that but man if it comes in to devoting that time and effort into taking care of themselves it's like no it's secondary and I just it doesn't make sense to me it's like guys it's really you know because we work with so many people that just say I don't have the time but now you have the time to take all the medication you have to take and have to deal with all the ailments you have and it's like Make the, you know, make the time, you know, reverse it, you know, I mean, you don't have to let yourself get into that shape. It, it really is, and it doesn't take that much time. You know, you don't need an hour, you need a couple sections of 15 minutes a day. The ultimate, uh, the suck is an old uh, Vietnam Marine Corps term, and it was about these young, uh, you know, guys and gals that were over there at a time that wasn't, uh, you know, very good. I mean, it was pretty rough, and when they were out there, they called it being in the suck, which meant it was like, you know, they're out in the ultimate worst, nastiest, terrible, awful place they could be. And they all knew it, but it was, you know, you either had to suck it up and drive on or you probably weren't gonna make it home. So they called it the suck, but for them it was kind of a term, if we're in the suck, it means that we also have to get it together and get out of it, you know, and not let, not succumb to it. So I tried to create an event that kind of, it not encompasses a little bit. I mean, they're not gonna be doing the things that these guys in Vietnam were, of course. But it's going to be bad. It's going to be really hard. It incorporates military, uh, calisthenics. It incorporates some of the different races I've done around the uh, around the world. It incorporates some ultra running. I got some of the instructors here at um, at WIU, uh, like Tim Piper and Kathy McMillan, that are bringing me some strongman stuff and a bunch of students to uh, to uh, use for the weekend. So it's going to be a good time. And then part of the proceeds from it are going to go back to the. Um, to the, the scholarship that we have here at uh, WIU, the Diane Decker Memorial Scholarship. So so kind of a win-win. I get a win by torturing them a little bit and then uh, the school wins by getting some money back. There's an old saying that uh, I have on the wall that says the only way to define your limits is by going beyond them. I think, you know, again, I think so many times, um, so many of us, you know, at times we live in that little, that box. We live in that box and we don't go outside of it, which, I mean, yeah, okay, you know, different strokes for different folks, but I don't know, it's kind of interesting to see what's on the outside of that and to define, to define your limits. So I hope that a lot of them will get to that point where, oh my gosh, you know, I'm gonna fall off the edge of the world and go, wait a second, I can go a little bit further and go a little bit further and um, we'll just find out that they maybe they, they are stronger than they thought they were, you know, and they're able to do more. I hope it can, can motivate them, you know, it may be ultimately empowerment. I want them to be empowered when they walk away. I want them to be like, yes, I am that strong. I am that tough. Uh, you know, even though I live in uh, San Diego, California right now, I uh, decided to bring the suck back to um, the Midwest because, uh, you know, the Midwest, is, it's where I grew up. And I think the Midwest, um, it, it really instills in a lot of us, I think, that grow up in this area. You know, it's funny because I've lived in the East Coast, the West Coast, and down South, and we're always kind of, uh, you know, the punching bag and the big, we're the joke for the rest of uh, the perimeter of the United States. but. I think as Midwestern people are pretty darn, pretty darn uh, good people, and I think we're also uh, pretty tough too. So I wanted these, uh, you know, these kind of East Coast, uh, West Coast, and some of these other guys and girls to kind of get a taste of what it's like to grow up in the Midwest on a farm. So it's going to be on the farm. They're going to get experience some farm chores. Uh, 
They're going to be digging some post holes. They're going to be chopping some firewood. They're going to be messing with some livestock. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think the suck, it'll definitely give them a, a little bit of an idea of what it's, just a little bit of what it's like to be on a farm. But, yeah, it's not like growing up on a farm, just a taste. So, hopefully it gives them a little bit more respect for us, us, uh, you know, dumb old uh, Midwestern folks, as they sometimes like to call us. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on doing the world's toughest events for the last about 15 years. And next year I have a 260-mile kayak race. Not 100, I have 100 hours to do it nonstop. And then a 300 mile, a 300 mile mountain bike race across Costa Rica, um, and then you know there'll always be more because I, I love that stuff. Uh, business wise, uh, my wife just started working with me full time a year ago. Um, we just our business has just taken off. She's working there now. We just hired five more, uh, you know, people to work with us. Our goal is to be able to start franchising it eventually and to go nationally. So with, with WIU, I think, you know, continue to do, you know, anytime they need anything uh, to be there um, to help out. I want to continually always give back to the scholarship that, that we have. Um, it is great, you know, we, we are able to give uh, one student from around McDonough and Fulton County each year a chance to go to uh, school completely free. We, we pay for their books, we pay for the room and board, we pay for everything. So. It's pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah, you know, if I can do things like this and then, you know, have a great time, get this university involved and then give back to the university, it's probably, probably what I continue to do. And then, of course, come back and uh, hang out at homecoming and drink a few beers, too, I guess. So, <laughs> you know, what keeps me motivated is, uh, you know, I've, I've hit bottom before. I was suicidal when I was 27. I sit around with a 41 Magnum one night playing Russian roulette after I had, uh, been partying for about two days nonstop, and uh, you know it was, it was a really it was a, it shook me down, and I, it, I just I never wanted to go back there again, and I just uh, you know I told myself then always continue to strive to be something better, and um, I, I just you know I fell in love with life after that when I almost lost it, uh, it really I just had a new I kind of an awakening I guess you know I mean. Uh, like this thing is pretty amazing and if I think that 27 I almost snuffed it out it just really you know it still kind of lingers and haunts me um, so I, I want to continue to be the best that I can be but I also want to continue to to motivate others you know I mean you know I'm 42 years old I'm not getting younger and I to continue to do this stuff as long as I can and not to say like you know not for any egotistical reasons I mean there's partially of course a little bit for me just to be like yes I'm still doing it but to kind of show you know other people out there that you know if you believe in yourself if you work hard put the time and effort in that you know you too that you can do anything in the world you want to I mean it's just a matter of wanting to do it I mean I tell people I don't blame you for not wanting to do it. I mean who wants to run a hundred miles I mean it's not fun I mean I have to think of a lot of other things I'd rather be doing but if you want to and decide to that you physically are humanly capable of doing that so that's why you know just to kind of I don't know help motivate I guess and maybe gets Maybe find some other people out there like me that kind of need something like that and they can relate to, you know. In a world where every meal can be supersized and there never seems to be enough time to fit in a daily workout, Joe Decker says fitness should be a priority. And as you just saw, it is in his life. Maybe not to this extreme, but he hopes to motivate others to do the same. As for his future, he wants to continue to return to WIU and help in many ways, from organizing more suck races to speaking with current kinesiology students, Decker attributes much of his success to Western and is doing what he can to give back to the university. For the Purple Chair, I'm Amanda Shoemaker.